Hi everybody, uh, Richard Ells here from Electronium, uh, giving you a quick update. We are forking this week uh, to the new smart contract blockchain. It's been a long time coming, it's been an exciting journey uh, and uh, we've got an awful lot done. Uh, well, I wanted to just go through uh, anything that you have to do as users, which is very little, if anything at all. And uh, perhaps a little bit about the future, perhaps, uh, well, a few bits and pieces. I never do this with a uh, with a teleprompter. I always just gab along, so I shall do so. I have, however, bought a piece of paper because there are a good few things that get done whilst we are in maintenance mode, and I thought I'd share some of those with you. So, uh, when when we just before the fork, just keep an eye on our social media. We'll let you know when we're going into maintenance mode. Now, what that actually means is maintenance mode for the Electronium uh, ETN app. Uh, um, you won't be able to make transfers with that. You won't be able to do uh, telephone uh, airtime top-ups and things with that either. It, it's all going to be on hold whilst we do this uh, large migration of our internal users. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so as a user, you don't need to do anything. If you've got paper wallets, you still don't need to panic. If you've got uh, if you've got uh, ETN on the ETN app, you don't need to panic and you don't need to do anything. It's all going to get taken care of by the team. Uh, obviously, if you run an exchange or something more technical, if you're running the command line or if you're one of our vendors, you may need to update some code, but I'll, I'll explain that a little bit in a moment. And they are catered for elsewhere in our documentation set. So this is more about end users and what they need to do, which as I say, is very little. So <clears throat> once you see us going into uh, maintenance mode, I'm just going to run very quickly through what we're doing. So. There's going to be a, uh, a launch of the, the new smart contract blockchain. So that will mean a, a new genesis block of that. Now, this is a continuation of the Electronium blockchain, but we're starting everything again from block one on the new chain to make things neat and to make sure that everything can be audited and seen right from the start. So uh, we're going to be uh, uh, launching our, so we're going to maintenance, that gets launched. Uh, we've also got the uh, launching of the IBFT validators. Uh, let me run through these quickly, then I'll explain what some of them are. Uh, launching the new block explorer, so you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. Uh, once we um, once we hit that fork height, our Oracle and our bridge uh, needs to go live. So let me explain what they are quickly in the midst of this list. So <clears throat> for, for a smart contract blockchain, or for the new blockchain to, to have all the ETN flow across to it, it needs to go across a thing called a bridge. If you Google this, you'll find that there are many bridges around and they're quite scary things. And they get their data from uh, from things uh, that provide trusted data called oracles. So we've, we've written an oracle, we've written a smart contract bridge. Both of those things have been audited by Hacken.io. Great team there, by the way. Big shout out to those. Thank you for all your help, guys, at uh, Hacken.io. You've made us feel much, much more comfortable about this fork. Uh, they gave us 10 out of 10 for both those things from a security perspective, which was what we were uh, taking them on for to, to make sure that we've done everything right. And uh, they did find a few minor things, no majors, but uh, we worked with them and got those fixed. So we much, much appreciate those guys' help. And we're very confident about going into this fork. The Oracle provides the data from the old blockchain and the, uh, the smart contract bridge allows the ETN to flow from the old blockchain across the bridge into the new blockchain. That all sounds very complicated and it sounds like you're going to have to do something. You are not. Don't worry, the software takes care of all of that. So when an exchange opens its wallet in the software, it automatically goes, oh, it's time for an update. It will flow everything across the bridge. They just need to update their software and start using the new address format of things themselves. So you will see an end to the old ETN address format. Now that doesn't mean the private keys have changed. We are using the same private keys across the network. So that does mean that your old private keys will uh, will be able to enable you to migrate across. Don't worry too much about any of this. Effectively, what it means is that if you've got the ETN app, you just ignore everything, wait for the fork to pass, and you'll have a new wallet address and your ETN will have been migrated across to the smart contract blockchain. So uh, uh, via, the, via the smart contract bridge. So the things we're doing in the background whilst that maintenance mode is on, we've got all of the ETN vendors to migrate across. So that uh, that involves uh, uh, predominantly any task users and the vendor system within any task. So there's a fair amount of work to do there. Uh, 
Uh, there's also other ETN vendors, the top up providers, some of the mobile network operators and stuff that that all has to take place in the background. So our guys will be working on that. Nothing for you to do, but just to let you know why the maintenance mode is switched on. Uh, uh, we've got an app tour that we need to launch. There's all sorts of bits and bobs that are, that are coming in the background so that when we come out of maintenance mode, everything should work. So the idea is when we come out of maintenance mode, you'll open your wallet and the chances are uh, you will uh, see your ETN balance there. But if you don't, don't panic because what we're doing is there are literally millions of users on this system. Remember, we've got a vast number of people. And so the, the migration process, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, ourselves in the back, in the back end. Uh, we are going to be prioritizing different people. So the first people we're prioritizing to get migrated across in the maintenance mode are our people got that 28,000 uh, sellers on any task. So we want to migrate those across first because those people are actually dependent sometimes, or certainly they're using uh, ETN to, to supplement their income. So we, we want to make sure they get across first. So any task users go across first. Then we uh, are migrating uh, people who had wallet balance above X and we've got a whole list of a whole list of, of different people that we're migrating people that haven't logged into their wallets for absolutely ages will be migrated last but what we've done rather cunningly is if anybody goes well I want to see whether I've been migrated if you log into your app at any time it automatically puts you into the priority kit so everybody that's actually interacting with the app will automatically be jumped forward so that doesn't mean you it will happen absolutely instantly but really, fairly quickly, it, you will be uh, you'll be processed through, and you'll see the balance arrive in the wallet at the new end. Now, that basically means you have to do nothing. And even if you said, "Oh, I'm not going to get around to that for six weeks," won't matter. If it's six months, it won't matter. You'll be okay. So don't panic about any of that. I said I'd come back to IBFT. So the, the uh, we, we're using a new validator system. Uh, you may have heard me talk about or read about our, our old validator system or on the system uh, on the system we had before so uh, the, the one we're migrating away from those validators uh, were clever they were uh, unique to us they were permissioned validators uh, again you might have heard me talk about ngos and people we're working with on the ground in places that are um that are also our validators because they're trusted well we're still using trusted validators people still have to be permissioned and as such, that is enabled us to do something even more clever. So our smart contract uh, blockchain is uh, fully Solidity uh, compatible. So in other words, it's using the EVM, uh, much the same as Binance or uh, Solana. So the, or, or Ethereum itself, of course. So uh, our, our EVM model uh, is, is industry standard, but our validators are very much unique to us and it enables us to do some clever stuff. So IBFT stands for Istanbul, uh, Byzantine, Fault Tolerant, slightly uh, boring, uh, I'm sure, to hear. But nobody else is really using this technology. Uh, and that's probably due to the nature of the fact that we've transitioned really, really nicely through with permission validators. So we're going to have this core of IBFT validators that enables them to have no consensus. Oh, sorry, they've got a consensus mechanism, but they, they don't need any confirmation blocks after the block with the transaction. Now that probably doesn't mean much to you, but in, in blockchain terms, it's absolutely enormous. So all blockchains uh, pretty much 99.999% uh, uh, have got to have confirmation blocks after the first one because they have chain reorganizations. We can't have chain reorganizations because of IBFT. Uh, and that means that we have exceedingly fast transaction speeds with finality so that means that the transaction is spendable immediately five second blocks uh five second transactions five second finality so that transaction is ready for someone else to spend it immediately you may have seen this thing where you send funds to an exchange and it, you can't actually trade it for x amount of time or you send etn to to another wallet and they can't actually spend it on for an amount of time they're cool that's waiting for confirmation blocks in case of a chain real so with the new IBFT mechanism, we are giving uh, a whole new lease of life to, to, to areas of the blockchain that need instant finality. And there are quite a few places where in smart contracts, instant finality is really handy. So uh, I'm really excited to be, to be telling you more about that in the future. Uh, we also have um, 
a layer that nobody else has because we've got IBFT and because we've got permission validators. We've got a layer that enables us to have a, a sort of a corporate level of, uh, of smart contract access and transaction access. So instead of having uh, her transaction fees, they can operate in a fee-less environment. It won't be fee-less entirely, but it means that they can invoice fixed amounts. We've got some quite clever stuff that literally nobody else is doing. We're also working on a few things that, are, that nobody else is doing that relies on uh, this new layer. Won't tell you what they are yet because uh, we want to uh, it, announce those once we've got them going and they're really cool. So, uh, but basically, yeah, we've got, uh, we, we've got good things ahead. Uh, the smart contract system is, is very well tested. We actually were ready really to roll out before Christmas, but we really wanted to get Hacken.io involved in that bridge and uh, add Oracle Audit just because uh, you've seen forks with other projects. I'm sure we had a few forks early in our uh, history that uh, didn't go quite as we planned and we we're a little terrified of that. So we wanted to make sure from a security perspective, everything was safe. So apologies for any delays. Thank you for your patience in this. We are probably more excited about this project than we've ever been, which is rather nice. So yeah, time keeps, keeps pressing on, but uh, yeah, we're doing good things. So I'm excited to get the thing launched this week. Slightly nervous, more gray hairs, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting it all done and getting it out there. You will have heard me talk about MetaMask. One last thing after it comes out of maintenance mode that won't go live immediately. Uh, so you won't have immediate access to, we well, can use MetaMask immediately on the smart contract blockchain. That's, that's a type of wallet. And when I say MetaMask, there's others as well, Exodus and various others, but you'd have to run, you'd have to run a node. And that sounds a bit complicated and it is a bit complicated. So to get around that at some stage, once we're out of maintenance, we will also uh, prepare and release some, some public nodes for, for MetaMask use and for, for other uh, uh, smart wallet use. And those wallets give you the access to write and, uh, and utilize uh, smart contract functionality. So anybody who's interested in doing that, you'll be able to use it from day one, but at the same time, it's it will become less complicated once we get our public nodes out. So thanks again for your time. Uh, uh, have a great day. And we look forward to the week with great interest. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.